So hey everyone and welcome back and today I'll be giving you 5 tips for edits in Premiere Pro. Number 1. Sequence Frame Rate Let's compare these two edits which are the exact same, except they're not. One of them is in 15 frames per second, whilst the other is 30 frames per second. We can easily tell that the one in 30 is smoother than 15, however the one in 15 flows better. Depending on your style, you want to choose a frame rate that is suitable for what you are trying to achieve. For example, if you want one frame glitches to be seen easily, then using a lower frame rate will help achieve that. Take a look at this edit that I made in 15 frames per second. I added one singular frame of an adjustment layer with the invert effect and even though it is only one frame, you can see the impact of it very clearly. The benefits of lower frame rates are is that it's easier to work with frames because the less there are, the less time you need to spend using techniques such as masking. It looks and feels more realistic in comparison to higher frame rates, especially if you're editing animation. The benefits of higher frame rates are, it can look more appealing, especially if you use a lot of Twixter or time remapping on your edits. Flow edits usually look much smoother, in fact, transitions will too. Number 2. Export settings and handbrake. If your edit has a lot of movement, then be sure to set the bitrate to CBR, which means constant bitrate, right before exporting your edit. It will take longer to export, but the quality will look far more sharp. Your edit may also be quite large in terms of file size. However, if you install a software called Handbrake, you can reduce how large it is without losing any quality. And don't worry, I've made it easy for you to use. All you've got to do is download the preset in the description and import it into Handbrake by right clicking around here and clicking on the import preset button, locate the file and you're almost done. All you've got to do is set the output and make sure to put .mp4 at the end. Hit export and you've got the exact same edit just in lower file size. Number 3. Graphing smoothly. A lot of people don't know that they can use graphs for scales, transitions and shakes but even if you think you do, are you doing it properly? Create some keyframes with anything, but we are going to be using scale. Once done, click the arrow next to it. Depending on whether you want the scale to accelerate or deaccelerate, we are going to create a bump to speed up that specific spot. I want the scale to be quick at the beginning, so I'll select the second keyframe and pull the handle towards the left. You must make sure it's on level not too high or too low. If I leave it here, you can see that it curves smoothly and also the tighter the bump is to the left, the quicker it is. So if I do put it to the left and then play it back, you can see that it's quicker. Sometimes it's difficult to tell whether the graph is on level because there is no bar like the one on the right. You can use the velocity as a reference to tell you where it's at. If I pull it to the right and slightly down, you can see that the number changes. You want to make sure that the number is as close as it can be to zero. And also make sure your timeline is on the same keyframe you are changing. Number four, Magic Bullet Looks Presets. About 90% of the time, I don't actually make my own color correction. If you've ever used Magic Bullet Looks, did you know that there are already presets available for you to use? Not only does it save you a lot of time from creating one from scratch, but most of these look extremely good. All you need to do is just simply click over here where it says looks and just find the perfect one. And if you think you can make some changes to it, then do so. For example, if I think that this is too bright, I can just simply move this S curve to the right and a bit down. If I think there's too much noise, then I can simply just turn it all the way down. And now it looks really clean. So before it looked like this and after it looks like this. But what I'm trying to say is that in short, you should use the presets which are completely free. It will save you a lot of time. And tip number five, SoundCloud. If you're struggling to find music for your edits, then just use SoundCloud. One of my favorite artists are Daffoot Dive, whose music I use a lot on my edits. Beatbox Bandit, you probably heard some of his music on other edits and just other artists in general, but I do recommend spending some time searching for music on this website because it has a lot of great ones. But I do highly recommend checking out this specific artist. They have some of the best music that you can find for edits. So yeah. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time. So yeah, peace.